Good morning. Welcome to this, our first Sunday of Advent. As we focus on hope this morning, it's a pleasure to have you with us. I've got a number of announcements, so let me start. The worship team would like to thank the many volunteers who came out yesterday to help with the decorating of the sanctuary and the hall. It looks beautiful, wouldn't you agree? And they would like to add that the reason volunteers are not paid is because they're priceless. <laughs> so thank you to all of you. A um, couple other things. We have a Facebook silent auction happening. It's ending on Monday, tomorrow, November 30th. So you want to get in those last minute bids and make sure that you're getting the items that you're wanting and hoping for. Many of them are Christmas related, but not all. And pickup will be this Wednesday, December 2nd in the morning from 10 to noon or 1 to 3. As well, we have some Advent letters that are being mailed out with upcoming events and included in that is our Christmas Eve service which is set for December 24th at 4.30 p.m. We are asking because we have limited space this year to please call the office and reserve your spaces for your family, okay? Very important. Call the office and reserve your space if you're going to be around Christmas Eve. Couple other things. I wasn't able to get an Advent devotional, but my family and I have put together little Christmas at home kits. So included in the kit is an Advent calendar, some reading, readings for each week of Advent, a bookmark about the legend of candy canes, a candy cane, a tea light, battery operated, so, and a little prayer, and another bookmark from the Canadian Bible Society. So, a few little fun treats in there, also a little Christmas service, and so feel free to pick these up there at the back of the sanctuary there in a green bin, and I think the Sunday school families are all getting one to take home as well, but this was also my just in case something happens and we can't be worshiping together any longer, then we have something that we can take home to have some Advent and Christmas worship. We're very hopeful <laughs> that we will be able to continue to be together for, well, foreseeable future but um, but we just don't know so we're preparing for all possibilities as I'm sure you are as well in a minute we're going to do the birthday box so if you've had a birthday in October or November I'm giving you some preparation here to check that out and in the meantime can we get our mission and service video and we're just Thank you. I think it's in another window there. Phew. Well, we might just listen to it. I'm not sure that that's it. Well, we'll wait a second. If you, let's do it the other way around. If you've got, if you've had a birthday in October and November, why don't you come forward to the birthday box? Um, and all donations, of course, go to the Mission and Service Fund and the World Development and Relief Fund. And um, hopefully we can get our Minute for Mission video working. So who's had a birthday?
we go. We should do two months in a row more often. Look at all the people who have had birthdays. <laughs> Wonderful. Congratulations and thank you. I didn't think about this very well, did I? <laughs> I perhaps could have planned better, but, <laughs> but thank you <laughs> for that. We're going to give it another try. Are we going to be able to do it, Teresa? We acknowledge that the lands on which we live and work are the traditional homelands of numerous indigenous peoples. We also acknowledge the long and painful history of relations between the Christian church, colonial settlement practices, and harm to these lands and peoples. We seek to live with respect on the land and in peace and friendship with its peoples. as we start to prepare for the arrival of the baby Jesus, to reclaim the good news of the light of the world. It is within the dancing shadows cast by a flickering candle flame that we remember the promise of hope and of new possibilities. We come to be reshaped and transformed by this light. We light a candle to remind us of the way of hope.
We gather to remember and reflect upon our lives, past, present, and future. We gather to be reshaped by the coming season of Christmas. We gather to reclaim our faith journey. Let us worship God, who gives us Jesus alive in the past, present, and future. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you're able and join with the choir in singing hymn number two, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. as we join in saying together our opening prayer. Ever-present God, on this first Sunday of Advent, help us to focus on hope. To hope is to want something different to happen. It's to recognize that things are not as we imagined they could be. Speak today into our places of pain and hurt and tears so that we can hear your message of hope for us. Remind us how all is made new through your Son, Jesus Christ. May we live in faith as your beloved children. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. I invite you to turn and greet your neighbor and wave. Our uh, thought for the day comes from Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who said, The celebration of Advent is possible only to those troubled in soul, who know themselves to be poor, 
and imperfect, and who look forward to something greater to come. Each Sunday in Advent, I wanted to add a little bit of the excitement and anticipation of the children, even though they're not here, but already up in Sunday school. So we're going to be unpacking the nativity scene each week. So this week, we of course have our beautiful manger, and we've got our donkey and our camel. So our our animals are here enjoying the manger just as it would have been before the arrival of Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus would be the animals finding shelter at the manger and eating the food that was left there by the shepherd and the farmer. So next week we'll add someone new to the mix. reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 64 verses 1 through 9 Oh that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence when you did awesome deeds that we did not expect you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you. Who works for those who wait for him? You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned, because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf. And our inequities, like the wind, takes us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father, We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember inequity forever. Now consider, we are all your people.
Our second reading this morning is from Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, and so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by him. You were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now I'm reading from Mark chapter 13, verses 24 to 37. The coming of the Son of Man. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. The Lesson of the Fig Tree From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you will know that he is near. And at the very gates, Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. The necessity of watchfulness. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware and keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It was like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. What I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the word of the Lord. And our hymn is number four, God of all places.
Please be seated. Let us pray. God of transformation, in this season of Advent, as we ready ourselves to utter in the Christ child, grant us the stillness necessary to reflect on your faithfulness. Amen. What does it mean to reshape and reclaim the Advent season? Perhaps this year, even more than other years, there is a desire to put Christ back in Christmas. Our faith motivates us to resist the commercialization and secularization of the season. We are called to focus on helping others, nurturing love, finding an inner calm, and enjoying some laughter during a time often filled with struggle and sadness. As we enter into this Advent season, let us remember the why, let us reclaim the who, and let us reshape the how as we refuse to let the current circumstances of our world overshadow the story of light coming into our midst and shining within our hearts. The people of Isaiah's time were filled with angst, anxiety, and turmoil upon returning to Judah and Jerusalem after many years in exile in Babylon. Though happy to return to their homeland, Rebuilding was difficult, and many had forgotten their faith. In the years away from their homeland, they turned to other gods and abandoned the rituals of the past. Not unlike our own time, the people listening to Isaiah feel that there is a deep chasm that is developed over the generations between God and God's people. We know the old stories of God's faithfulness, but more recent events may have us wondering if God has abandoned the world. Our young people do not know what it means to enter into the house of God, to pray, to sing, to find comfort and hope. Isaiah speaks to our weary, jaded, anxious souls and helps us remember who we are as we reclaim the love of God. He says, Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. We're all feeling anxious and afraid and impatient right now, whether it's waiting for a vaccine, anticipating a rise in COVID-19 cases, or considering the effects that this time of isolation has had on our relationships. We are all struggling right now. So it's not strange that we seek to hear a different message in this season, a reshaped understanding of ourselves as children of God that calls us to reach out farther, to love deeper, to dare to hope in a world full of sorrow. In a time in which so much feels out of our control, Isaiah is saying to us that we have a choice. We can choose how we respond. We can choose to admit 
our doubts and fears. We can choose to believe that we are not alone. This year, we have to find new ways to be the children of God and reclaim some of the old ways. I've seen on social media this resurgence to get back to writing those good old Christmas cards. I don't think that's me. Ironically, I'm normally a person who does write Christmas cards. I never gave them up. I've been writing 30, 40 Christmas cards every year. But this year, not feeling it. Don't think I'm going to do it. But if you're going to reclaim that old tradition, good on you. It's a great way to connect right now. Maybe instead we're discovering how to do online shopping. For some of us, that might be really new. For others, that might be old hat. <laughs> but that's a new way of doing things. Or maybe it's about organizing Zoom dinners or FaceTime meals with friends and family, trying to find, again, those new ways to connect. Maybe it's leaving a secret Santa gift on the doorstep of someone we care about. Perhaps it's making sure that at home you take the time to do something like light an Advent candle. Something generations ago every household would have participated in, but many of us have gotten away from. I invite you to keep thinking what are the new ways we can connect and what are those old traditions that we've left behind that maybe it's time to bring back out of the closet that can still have meaning, especially this year? No matter how you choose to mark this season of Advent, May it be meaningful and hopeful for you as we remember the true reason for this wonderful season. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm going to move over to the baptismal font here because we're going to do something a little different for our pastoral prayers. Even though today's service is focused on hope, part of that, as we kind of ponder on that quote from Dietrich Bonhoeffer, is in the midst of hope to acknowledge our hurts and our sorrows. And when we acknowledge those things, that helps us to regain hope for the future. So, I want you to offer to me the hurts and pains that you are dealing with right now um, as we enter into Advent. They can be specific if you want to be really personal, or they can be broad. So what are the hurts and pains we're experiencing? Yeah. be without family. I'm writing these on little paper tears. What else? Uh, no contact, right? No, yeah, no hugs, no contact. What else? Yeah, a grief, right? Yeah. Grief and loss of loved ones. What else? Mm -hmm. Concern for family, especially those that have been in a vehicle accident or 
or facing other challenges. What else? Yeah. Yeah, we're shedding tears for those in nursing homes, for sure. All that they're facing. What else? Hmm. Those who are dying alone, big time, yeah. What else? Anxiety for your children, yeah, yeah. Yeah, food shortages, um, and those are happening in different ways. I mean, I think you're thinking of food bank folks, but um, well, that way, yes, the lineups and and the increased difficulty of accessing things like food banks, right, um, at this time be because we're having to be distanced. It's not as easy as it normally is. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. What else? Yeah, that's one that's really hit home for me lately. I'm, I'm concerned about people living alone, yeah. And I'm concerned about frontline workers and um, all the anxieties and fears that they are facing. Sorry, I missed that, John. Oh, wow. Well, that, but that is, right? If that's a part of your regular routine, that's a big adjustment. So for, that's, for the snowbirds who can't go south, um, they're missing community and friends and family that they're not able to see. Um, it's not justification. It, it's, it's a lifestyle, right? And, and it's a big loss when we can't experience that. So, yeah. And you were saying, Teresa? Hmm. So, indigenous communities and uh, drinking water issues. That's been one in the news lately, too. Yeah, definitely. Are there others? Thank you. Small business owners on our minds. Shop local, everybody. I talked about buying online. Many of our local businesses do have online stores, but they're also easier to access without getting into close contact with a bunch of people in many cases. No Christmas concerts. I know. So the kids and no singing, no Christmas concerts. Some of those long-held traditions that we have at Christmas, right? Any other burning hurt or pain? Okay. I don't hear any others. I've never tried this, so we're going to see how it works. Um, the idea is that we're going to pour water into our baptismal font where we placed all of our tears that were written on washable marker with and theoretically our water is going to wash away those pains those hurts and hey it worked you can't see it but I know it worked <laughs> and if you felt the desire to to take a look you can come forward after worship one at a time and take a look at how God hears our cries and washes away our tears of pain and sorrow. I'm going to read for you now a poem entitled Tears by Mason Todd. 
the chaos of this world propels you forward, you have to keep moving. You can't stop for fear that if you did, if you were still long enough, if you were silent enough, you might actually cry out with no way to stop. Cry out for help, cry out in anger, cry out for God to tear open the heavens. You fear that the weight of a thousand moments would crush you. No, 10,000 moments. When you looked away, when you turned a blind eye to the cries of creation, the tears of those cries culminating in a tidal wave that crashes down upon you, pinning your feet to the ground, paralyzed by the revelation of your own inaction. You look around and see the stained cheeks of a stranger on the street, looking and listening as you are to those same cries. And in a moment, the weight becomes a little less. You're able to wiggle your toes and to move your fingers, becoming the hands and feet of God in creation. Because you are not alone. Not the only one carrying the burden of creation's cry. And what seemed so crushing, so enormous of a task, becomes something doable, something possible. You are capable of seeing and hearing creation's cry and responding, not with fear, but with hope. Hope that your actions matter. Hope that creation is not doomed. Hope that God does use you. Hope in the one who is to come. And our closing hymn this morning is number 29, Hark the Glad Sound.
with you. Righteousness be in you. Comfort be among you. Hope be around you. Go into the world reminded of God's steadfastness, revealing God's glory, redefining this season of waiting into preparation for the dawn of God's holy light. Amen. Thank you.